Hi friends, in the last lecture, I discussed about certain barriers in agreement. I presume that when you are going to go for negotiation, you will always try to remove this barrier. That is the only way of progressing forward, isn't it? Barriers will always remain. Throughout our life, we have lots of barriers and the only thing is they have to be removed. And we remove the barriers, whatever kind it is, and then we progress forward. So here, basically, the smooth sailing, when I said, it does not remain smooth because they are also full of barriers. And that barrier, I have given an idea which you have to remove. Now, I would like to highlight certain other things. One is the how to end the negotiation. The point is, okay, you started. I said that you start the negotiation with, you know, with a very crisp beginning, a very smooth sailing you continue, but you also have to end. In between, there will be discussions, there will be arguments, there will be disagreements, there will be agreements, there will be counterpoints, there will be, you know, concessions, all these things will go on. In the whole process, what will happen is, you know, you are going through the sailing. I may not say it's smooth sailing, but the thing is, okay, fine, I am sailing, I am going forward. At least I am not floating, nor I am sinking, okay. That means, I have to now end the negotiation. So, as the beginning is important, same is true for ending the negotiation. Let me highlight that. The point is when to end. See, I gave you an idea just before that you do not end till you find that it is in your favor. You recall that. Do not end the negotiation. Let it go on. That means, pulling it, pull it on, pull it on, pull it on till the whistle is blown to say stop. Okay? When to end? There is no real idea about when to end. When to end? See, the thing is, first of all, during negotiation invitation, if you are said that, okay, the negotiation we can have, uh, our meeting will be between 11 to 1. That means, you know that two hours time. Two hours is a time when you have to see that you have to start at 11 and you should be there by 10.30. As per my soft skill, I said that when you be there, be early and then you enter. And you may enter the negotiation room just 5 or 10 minutes before, depending on how they arrange the logistics. Once you are inside, started your negotiation, put your time clock on and then you see the 2 hours time you have put as a timer. Once you have put this timer, then your game plan is accordingly aligned. Yet, I would say that if it is logically going or rationally going, then 2 hours is the time within which it should be ending. But if you see that after about say just 10 minutes before the 2 hours time coming, you know if you find that your things have not really gone into any decisions, it is in the stalemate, then there are two options. One is you keep on pulling them through discussion, keep them involved through discussions, do not even let them look at their watch, do not give them the opportunity to you know do not make a distraction in such a manner that they will look at their own watch and decide oh now it is 2 hours. You keep on, you know, you just enchant them through your verbal communications and, you know, focus their attention towards you and keep on saying till this two hours has passed. They are also not aware. Quite often in many of the discussions, I can tell you, we had planned for one hour. It went for three hours. You mean to say all the discussions were rubbish? No. The discussions were very fruitful. You know, it went on. Either we have done it, we have extended beyond one hour or the opponents have or the client has extended beyond one hour. But the entire three hour was very, very, very positive and at the end of three hour when it said, okay, fine, we agree, these are the points we are noting down in the minds of meeting and in such cases, then suddenly we look at the watch, oh my God, we spent three hours. The point is, when to end three hours time we took, we ended three hours, two hours extra taken. So, when to end, you decide. Either you decide or the client will decide. If you are putting forward your right points, then the client will decide it early. And if you are not very happy with the outcome of this negotiation, then you decide it and extend it a little further. Okay? The difficulty is how to end. What is that ending statement? How do you stop it? Who ends? That is also important. Is it the client ending or you are ending? How to end? In fact, you know what happens is if you find that the decisions are not being taken or it could not arrive at and people are discussing and discussing, not necessarily contesting. In such cases, what you do is your role, I can tell you that you look at the watch 
and at least half an hour before you give a hint that our time is running out and we have to come to a conclusion. And that as soon as you say everybody becomes alert, yes, yes, we have spent two hours time we had in hand as per schedule and now it is almost one and a half hours we did not reach the conclusion. So, you decide how to end. So, there is nothing called a rule that you do this to end and you really in this kind of negotiations do not require a referee to blow the whistle as it is done for a football game after 90 minutes. No, you do not require it. The whistle will be blown in your own mind and also in the mind of the clients and then you will decide okay, now let us blow the whistle for final and okay, the game over. So, how to end is your intrinsic skill by which you will decide how to do it, but still how to end is always end with a good note, always end with you know even if the it's, it has resulted into disagreement, still I would say you end it with a very pleasant note. Simply saying okay, thank you very much uh, gentlemen for giving your time and we have really had a very wonderful discussion and very constructive discussion. Unfortunately, we are not being able to agree to your terms and conditions. So, we look forward for a future communications may not be on this particular issue, but some other issue we are always available, we are always uh, open, you are always welcome to us. That means, it is a very pleasant note by which I am ending and they also feel very you know once they find that because of them this agreement could not be reached and you are all saying all good praise for them, you are thanking them, you are congratulating them. In that case, you will find that they will be slightly internally ashamed and at least some of the people, at least the junior people, they will always you know whisper at your ear, sir actually very unfortunate we expected this to happen, but the thing is you know authority is not agreeing to this. I know that your points are very, very valid, but the only thing is unfortunately we are missing this particular agreement. The juniors will give you a feeder, you know this is how it is. Then comes close the deal. My point is when you are ending a negotiation, always have a target that you close the deal. Close the deal means whatever is the agreement come to an agreement. When to end I do not know. If I say that you keep on pulling it on till it is in your favor, the same thing is for the opponent. They will also keep on pulling it on till it is in their favor. That means, there is a point at which everybody is that at that access both of you will agree. Okay, and once you are agreeing that means, now you are ending. When you are ending close the deal at that point of time, do not delay. Okay, and then comes congratulation. How you end the negotiation I gave you a hint just now, you congratulate. If suppose it is a successful deal means a successfully closed deal, in such cases you must congratulate each other. You know immediately shake hands with every member. The signature signing is going on on the contract paper, but keep on shaking hands with every member. You know keep on hugging each other, keep on embracing each other show happiness that we are being together by closing this deal and signing an agreement. This is how you should end. You should never end the negotiation when the deal has been closed that you take it as almost you know like say they had to sign it, take the book and then walk out. No, there has to be a very strong humility reflected or represented by you when you are closing, when you are ending. So, congratulations, congratulating the team, opponent team for signing this agreement, congratulating your own team members for signing this agreement or closing the deal is a very, 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 very superior way of ending the negotiation. Shake hands. You must shake hands before you leave. You know, shaking hands is what? I said that the body contact makes a lot of sense. When I was talking about these, you know, I must have highlighted this particular point that body contact brings a kind of closeness to the mutual persons and shaking hands is one. I, I have given an idea how to shake hands, I know what kind of different kind of shake hands, whether it is a very strong shaking hands, whether it is very soft shaking hands, whether it is a melting shaking hand, everything whatever it is shake hands and then leave. Without shaking hands do not leave the room, wait for your opportunity. If there is a situation that when you are not comfortable with the agreement and you do not agree, then I would say exit without closing. That is another side of it. When you exit without closing, when you have seen that you have entered the ED, that means the exit domain, you have now found that if suppose this agreement is you know accepted, then you are going to suffer. So, it is basically worst consequences of 
negotiated agreement. If you find that you have gone into that zone, means you have gone into you know zone of possible discomfort, disagreement. If you have gone into that, then you are coming into a zone which is not a comfortable one. You are now coming into the exit domain. Once you have come into the exit domain, then you exit without closing. But even it, my friend, you are exiting without closing. Leave the pleasantry behind. You exchange hands, shake hands, exchange papers, exchange documents, exchange pleasantries, and then come out. Okay. But always, why this is done? You always leave a thread alive. If you leave a thread alive, then what happens is you will find that this particular point will bring you again together even if today it is led to non-closure of the agreement or a full disagreement. But you must leave the thread alive. Never shut your door on your opponents even if the deal is not closed. It's just like an, I give an example. Doorstep salesperson, when he rings the bell and you say that you don't require it, you don't want to buy it. He does not sh shut you out from his chart. He keeps you enlisted and then maybe sometime later again he will come to you. He knows that you might say again that you don't require it. But the thing is the thread he wants to keep alive. It is because of this, you know what happens is, it is because of this what happens is whenever you go for marketing, you leave a card and you also take a card, visiting card of the other person. This Exchanging visiting cards, I will discuss in my next lecture, a very interesting idea I have. But however, the thing is, I will discuss later. But this, why this card is being taken, it will go into the database, so that in future, again, you have an opportunity to meet them. Okay? So, whenever you are ending a negotiation without success, in such cases, I would say, leave the trade alive. And then, when you come back at your home, means your office, your base. In such cases, you retrospect the outcome. Why the negotiation was not successful? What are the points they claimed which we could not accept? What are the demands that they placed forward which we did not comply to? What was the rate that they were asking for which we did not agree to? What is the kind of game plan people played? What sentences who uttered? What are the sentences uttered by my own team member in exchange of that, in response to that? To have a full-fledged retrospect. So, ending negotiation does not mean end of the road. I say the ending negotiation is that now I am pausing for the next stage of negotiation. So, always in this particular process, do not end absolutely, do not just dissociate, do not ambiguate to the relationship. So, my friend, negotiation is a very strong soft skill oriented game. Then comes a situation where you are rounding up and the continuity. See the thing is when you are ending the negotiation, you try to round up the whole situation. That does not mean that you will be reading out the whole stuff. You know basically what I was reading in different kind of uh, uh, references that the culture of the country sometimes goes against rounding up means some country they believe that whatever has been discussed has been noted down then again it is reread and it is reread for confirmation that have we noted down everything that we agreed have we noted down everything that we disagreed have we noted down something which we promised have we noted down all the dates of delivery have we noted down the share of payments part by part everything is then read out once that means the whole 2 hours discussion after that 15 minutes of reading out what was what is the final outcome of this and then both of them agree and sign it is concluding the session there are some countries who have a culture that if suppose you reread as if you are trying to be extra sure that whatever has been discussed is agreed to they take it very offensively which i think is not a very right thing let this be, see, two hours discussion. It is humanly impossible to remember every sentence is uttered, every sentence uttered by every person at different point of time in sequences or in parallel. It is very difficult. So, ultimately, what is the takeaway from this negotiation? That these are the points agreed, these are the points which is uh, you know excluded from the agreement, 
these are the points which are to be adhered to. So, it is a quite a fair thing, but however, conclude the session. Close the deal is rounding up must lead to the closing the deal. I always say talk about this closing the deal, maybe sometime later in future, I will have a full set of lectures on simply deal, how to close the deal, how to sell, how to close the deal. I am not elaborating on this now. I will give you some bit of ideas in my next lecture in marketing, but the thing is a full set of lecture I am planning in future as a second phase of this particular lecture, where I will talk about only how to close. Okay, so, close the deal. So, rounding up by closing the deal and also create business for future. Do not leave it just like that. Create business for future, so that in later on this can be taken care of. You have a thread to come back again for future. Even if you have closed the deal for today, you know try to get a you know give a clue or get a clue in terms of future business. An example let me tell you. You have gone as an architect to negotiate with your client. Your this particular project has been now agreed upon and you signed. You simply say that we are still having more manpower in our office. This we are going to take care as per the time schedule and the fees that you have worked out. Do you want to assign us any other additional project which my additional manpower which I have or say idle manpower which I have in my office can take care of it? They will you will find that immediately there may be a chance that the client will see yes, yes, we have a small project, can you take care of it? That means basically what I have done, I have just you know dealt with another business in future. That may not be today, that may be six months after. They may say, okay, fine, this particular project will go on for two years. Uh, yes, yes, it is a good idea, then we can also work out we have another project in our mind and then let us work out in such a manner that uh, after six months when the, you are working on this, you put additional manpower and take care of our second project. That means you build it. So, that is how you round up. You never round up saying, okay, this deal is closed. Thank you, gentlemen. No, never say that. So, when you are creating the business for the future, basically you are preparing for the next game because everything every time a contract will call for a negotiation, a discussion. Because if a negotiation is a culture, suspecting that your rates are higher than actual or reasonable, then in such case a negotiation is a culture, then everybody will quote higher and ultimately negotiate and come to a rate. This you have to understand. So, you prepare for the next game. So, negotiation never ends really. You have closed this deal by this negotiation, you have created a business for the future and now you are preparing for the next game. Again a ball game will start in the similar manner the way I have said. And this suggestion friend you take it very, very seriously. Once the deal is closed, negotiation resulted into positive agreement signed, do not wait any farther, just walk out as early as possible. As early I would say instantly. Of course, I am saying with a little bit of extravagance. Huh? The point is the agreement signed, immediately shake hands with everybody, you know, you hug each other, okay, and then immediately, okay, sir, goodbye, we will see again. Leave it. You know why? You do not know that if you give some extra time, hang around there for some time, the decision may change. Agreement signed can also be disapproved or withdrawn. Do not give any time. Once you have left that office, there is no chance of that office to take a contrary decisions. It may so happen that agreement is signed, you are just sitting there for another half an hour to have a cup of coffee and chatting and suddenly the chairman has an idea and he says, can you hold on this agreement? Have you signed it? He gets a clue, yes it has been signed. He says, can you hold on for some time? I have to look into it. Your entire signatures, now it is invalid. And that half an hour that you waste, spent with them for pleasantries and you know, you know, I would say the PRs or public relations is now going to be counterproductive. So my suggestion, friend, is is just like salesperson. Once the product is sold, push out the buyer from the shop. Similar here. Once the deal is closed, agreement is signed. Just don't stay there any farther. Just leave with all pleasantries done. So, walk out at the earliest is my suggestion. When I am saying prepare for the next game, you secure repeat order negotiations. That means quite often not every time that you are giving, you are delivering something, you are sometimes you are delivering a service. So, you always secure a repeat order negotiation. That means for any service that you are giving, 
in the discussion itself you put one line giving a clue or giving a hint for a repeat order and for that you decide another negotiation date that is how you round up. So friends up to this what I have said is you start the negotiation that means it is a process that has certain sequences and you have to manage that process by yourself. Now always you know when you are listening to me it depends that who is listening to me are you on the giver side or are you on the receiving side are you a buyer are you a seller my point is true for everybody only thing is you have to put yourself into the shoes of yours and then listen to my point. So this idea of negotiation is true for everybody everybody. So what I suggest is that you go through the entire steps I have said okay try to put it in your own domain and try to review that what should be your tasks. When I am saying you should you should basically whether you are on the opponent side or on the you know your side it is true only thing is your focus your perspective changes. So, it is a two group when you are on this side then you look from this side all the points that I have said and when you are on the other side you look towards every point from your perspective that is how is going to be the benefit of this particular lecture. After this in my next set I will discuss very briefly the common mistakes that is done during negotiation. This common mistakes you please take care and see to it that you do not commit. Okay? Thank you. Uh, next one.